Now that we talked about the white primordial Tesserosa, it's time to take a look at the second member of the Demoness Trio, the purple primordial Violet, or better known as Ultima. As usual, we'll be going over her powers and abilities and see just how powerful the purple primordial Ultima truly is. Now there will be spoilers for characters, so here is a spoiler warning just in case, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Tensura content in the future. <laughs> Like Testarossa, Ultima is part of the seven primordial demons and she was known as the Purple Primordial Violet before joining Rimuru Tempus. In ancient times, the Purple Primordial was responsible for guarding the underworld gate located in between the domain of the Demon Lord Dagril and Luminous Valentine, but during an unknown battle, the gate was destroyed. She would often fight with the forces of Dagril, but when she isn't messing with the Demon Lord, she would spend her time fighting the Yellow and White Primordials. The three Primordial Demons spend so much time fighting each other that the remaining Primordials referred to them as the Demoness Trio. Now, as we all know, Diablo eventually went into the Demon Realm to recruit new workers where he recruited them. At first, she only agreed to meet Rimuru because she was curious what kind of person he was, but after he accidentally dismissed them as threats, the Purple Primordial became quite intrigued with him. Rimuru even thought that the Purple Primordial was just a cute little girl, but don't let her appearance fool you because she's the most cunning, cruel, and sadistic of the Primordial demons. That said, the Purple Primordial saw her allegiance to Rimuru and brought with her 200 demon soldiers and two demon lieutenants, which were later added to a new legion led by Diablo called the Black Numbers. After the introductions, they moved to the labyrinth where Rimuru provided bodies for the demon subordinates of the Purple Primordial. The Purple Primordial herself was given a special type of Orichalcum body that was created by mixing gold and magisteel. The body is much stronger than normal magisteel and the gold allows for better manipulation of magic cubes. She proceeded to possess the body and easily adjusted to a new physical body which allowed her to finally evolve from an Ash Demon into a Demon Peer. But besides that, Rimuru also gave the Purple Primordial a new name, naming her after the Ultima GTR supercar and increasing her threat level to that of a disaster class. Rimuru even gave both her lieutenants names. One was named after the Bugatti Veyron and the other was named after the Pagani Zonda. Veyron was a demon at the Duke class having lived for more than 4,000 years and his strength is only second to the Archduke Moss, the subordinate of the White Primordial with a threat level of a lower disaster class. Then Zonda was a Viscount class demon having lived for around 400 years and he has a Calamity class threat level. Because of Ultima's cunning and attentive nature, she was given the job of Chief Prosecutor of the Public Prosecution Office where she worked with Rogert, one of the Goblin Elders. Her the job was essentially to do detective work and catch anyone committing evil in Tempus and sometimes she would also be responsible for intelligence gathering or interrogation work. Now because Tessarosa was rarely in Tempus and often worked in Ingratia, Ultima would normally get into arguments with Carrera instead and it became such a normal daily occurrence that citizens of Tempus started making bets. They both argued over things like extradition of criminals or the treatment of suspects and sometimes mundane things like food menu items or who gets to buy the latest outfits. That's basically what Ultima normally spends her time doing in Tempest. If she isn't arguing with Carrera or annoying Diablo, she will be working as the chief prosecutor or occasionally challenging the Insecta Zagion who she still has never defeated. Now, when the Eastern Empire attacked Tempest, she was placed in charge of watching over Gabriel's third legion which comprised of the Blue Numbers and the Heril. During the battle, Gabriel and his forces were engaging the enemy airships and because Ultima was an advisor to the legion, Gabriel asked her for permission to experiment with the Dragonus Dragon Warriorization ability so they can use it to break through the airship's defenses. Ultima was hesitant to approve it but after realizing that if Gabriel and his Heril were successful in defeating the airships without her help and if they managed to get stronger, Rimuru might praise her so she allowed it. But eventually, they were overwhelmed by the enemy airships and Gabiru himself even got trapped by the mana disruptors. Luckily, Rimuru gave the order for Ultima to join the battle so she headed straight for the leading airship. Inside the airship, the Major General Faraga, the leader of the air combat flying corps, was celebrating his victory because he thought that Gabiru was the resurrected true dragon Baldora. But when he turned to his side, he saw a beautiful purple head lolly sitting next to him. This was of course the purple primordial Ultima and she somehow managed to get past the mana disruptors, snuck on board the airship and found a seat right beside Faraga. I mean, that's a giga trap move right there. She then introduced herself and asked about the airships, how they work and even inquired about the remaining forces in the Eastern Empire. I mean it's not surprising because like I said her job was not just finding evidence and detective work, she was also an intelligence marshal so of course gathering useful information was part of the mission. Paragon was angered by Ultima's attitude so he ordered the officers to turn the mana disruptors towards the interior of the ship hoping to cut off her magic use. 
However, what he didn't account for was what kind of demon Ultima was. If she has any type of demon lower than a Duke class, it would have worked, but because she has a primordial demon, she doesn't need magic cubes from the environment. Instead, she can simply produce her own magic cubes from her body. But Faraga, thinking that the mana disruptors work, took out his gun, a M1911 that came from our world, and unloaded all the rounds at Ultima. Despite shooting the gun at point blank, Ultima was still able to catch all the bullets in the palm of her hand like it was nothing. Seeing this, Faraga took out his magical blade and put all his powers into the blade, striking an Ultima. But before the blade landed, she already teleported behind him. Ultima became annoyed by his actions and decided it was best to just extract the information she wants forcefully. And so the bridge began to be filled with the sounds of balloons popping, filling the interior with blood and headless corpses, leaving Faraga the last one alive. In his desperation, Faraga ordered the surviving mages on the airship to pour all their magical energy into summoning a flaming giant, a high-ranking spirit that can only be summoned by heroes, but Ultima simply used the elemental magic Frozen Hell to freeze and shatter the flaming giant. Ultima became bored, so she spared Faraga, letting him fall into despair, and before she left, she created an Abyss Core, a very potent elemental magic created from pure mana, allowing it to manifest into a powerful black flame. The massive flame engulfed the entire airship and eventually expanded into nuclear fire, the ultimate destruction magic. The nuclear fire exploded and it spread to the other airships as well, burning and consuming everything. On her way out, she grabbed Gabiru and she did contemplate about leaving him there as a punishment. But she decided against it, fearing that Rimuru might get mad if she accidentally killed Gabiru. Although she did receive the chance to reprimand Gabiru afterwards when Rimuru agreed to let her provide some training to the Dragonudes. But anyways, after the initial Eastern Empire attack was stopped, Rimuru held a reward ceremony to awaken those that were eligible into true demon lords and Ultima was one of them although she was not given any souls because there were not enough souls to awaken the demoness trio together. The reason is that Rimuru had wanted to maintain the balance between them so Ultima was only given a new title as a reward, the title of Pain Lord. However, Rimuru did get some souls later when Guy Crimson asked him to awaken the green and blue primordial Mizari and Rain into true demon lords. It was actually Wisdom King Raphael who scammed Guy Crimson out of half a million souls and using the leftover 300,000. The demoness trio was finally given the souls required to awaken. They eventually awakened into true demon lords after their fight against the true dragon Valgren. During their fight, they were struggling against Valgren, but thanks to Tesserosa's intelligence and the advice from Valdora, the demoness trio was able to figure out a way to harm her. They did this by creating weapons with skilled based attacks like Hinata Sakaguchi's Smelt Slash, and with this in mind, Ultima created two toxic blades that were wrapped in her demonic aura, and these were actually the same weapons that she developed to fight against Zagion. Despite understanding how to harm Valgren, the difference in power was still too great, and they were not able to defeat her. After the battle with Valgren, the Demon's Trio regrouped with the others so they can launch an attack on the flagship of Emperor Rudra. Ultima along with Tessarosa, Carrera, Benimaru, Shion, Sowe, Veyron, Agera, Esprit, and Zonda were the team selected to raid the airship. Upon reaching the interior of the flagship, they were met by the remaining single digits of the Imperial Nirgar and the four horsemen of the Empire. Valgrim proposed a final battle among the subordinates of Rimuru and Rudra, which Benimaru agreed to, so everyone was assigned to their respective opponents. Ultima's opponent was the leader of the Four Horsemen, Damrada, or also known as the Fist Saint because of his skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he was considered to be one of the strongest fighters in the Eastern Empire, rivaled only by Lieutenant Kondo and the true dragon Valgrim. He is a human that has reached the level of a saint, the highest evolutionary stage of humans, equal to a true demon lord, and he has a threat level of a disaster class. During their battle, Damrada was able to evenly match Ultima in terms of strength, but when she became serious and created six pairs of purple wings to attack him, the battle was already decided. But this was also mainly thanks to the fact that Ultima had actually obtained an ultimate skill before the fight. The skill is called Poisonous Death King Samuel, which gave her the ability to see through the weaknesses of various living things and creating a suitable poison for her targets. This ultimate skill has 8 sub-skills which included Thought Acceleration, Universal Perception, Demon Lord Haki, Space-Time Manipulation, Multi-Dimensional Barrier, Weakness Identification which allows her to see the weaknesses of targets, Little Poison Creation, an ability that is able to create any type of poison she wants, and finally World of Annihilation, a super enhanced version of Rimuru's Merciless. This sub-skill allows her to kill all life forms that do not possess an ultimate skill, but sadly, Rimuru banned her from using it, so you can imagine how deadly this ability actually is. But back to the fight, Damrada knew that he was about to lose, so he gathered all his energy for a final attack. His attack worked and Ultima collapsed, but when it transformed into one of the purple wings she created, it was already too late. Before he even noticed, there was a hole punched through his chest, and because Ultima's fingertips were coated with a powerful toxin created with her ultimate skill, Damrada fell and was slowly succumbing to the poison. Before he died, he offered his soul and knowledge to Ultima, asking her to protect Masagi Honjo, which she agreed to. She then wrapped his remains with her purple wings, taking the whole of Damrada for her own possession and dust. The Feast Saint was no more, now a new demon of the Feast was born. But even though the Eastern Empire was defeated, they still had to fight against Phantom King Feltway's forces and the Mana Smiker that has taken over Emperor Rudra. 
During Walpurgis, it was decided that Ultima along with Veyron and Zonda would be sent to the Holy Void Damagania, the Domain of Dagru and home to Heaven's Tower, a gateway that is connected to the Heavenly Star Palace, the residence of the Star King Dragon Valdonava and the Angels. When Felway and Michael started their attack, a huge tremor was felt throughout Damagania, and when Heaven's Tower opened, Dino, Leon, Gracia, Pico and Fen, the youngest brother of Dagru, came out. During this encounter, Ultima had to fight Gracia and Pico who were both primordial angels but she was confident of beating them because the both of them only had an EV of 2 million compared to Ultima's own EV of 2 million and 67,000. However, Dagru suddenly changed size and had betrayed them so Ultima and Veyron were left alone to fight Leon, Dino, Pico and Gracia but luckily Rimuru arrived with reinforcements. Michael arrived as well and they were ordered to retreat but eventually Rimuru defeated Michael. When the battle ended, Ultima, Veyron and Zonda were sent to Luberius to help Shion fight the giants so I'm definitely looking forward to that in the upcoming volume. Anyways, that's everything on the Purple Primordial Ultima so far and I don't know why but she kind of reminds me of Tanya Degracha from Yojo Senki because she's also a cruel and sadistic lolly like her. Although Ultima is not really my favourite Primordial out of the Demoness trio, I did found scenes with her to be quite interesting and I look forward to seeing her in future volumes. But yeah, a demon lolly girl, what's not to like? So what are your thoughts on the Purple Primordial Ultima? I would love to hear them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, feel free to give the video a like, subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell for more Tensura and other anime content in the future. As always, thanks for watching and stay safe everyone.